My name is Eric Koo. Um, I'm the owner of uh, 10 Past 10, which is a uh, website uh, dedicated to selling uh, vintage Rolex watches. Uh, and I also run the Vintage Rolex Forum. I fell in love with the mechanical aspect of watches when I was a, was a child. Uh, it was very, I couldn't conceptualize how a mechanical watch worked, um, but I always was marveling at the fact that something so small and made by human hands could keep time so accurately. Time is like the thing that no matter, uh, you know, how rich you are, how <laughs> poor you are, like you can never buy more time. You know, time is like a finite thing and it is what it is. There's nothing you can do. You can't intervene to uh, have more time or change it. Uh, and, uh, you know, and that's kind of like an interesting thing, you know, the concept of time itself. I like collecting personally watches uh, with history and also um, of like high quality, like very high quality examples of uh, everything I own. I want to think it's like one of the best examples of whatever it is. Generally speaking, I think I like uh, things that are enduring classics, something very timeless. I bought a, a 1930 Tank Centre in Platinum. Um, you know, Cartier has fascinated me as a brand uh, recently a lot because I think um, you know, they sometimes get overlooked in the conversation of great watch brands um, because they're not really known for their complications or whatever, but to me, uh, their styles are so iconic that that's almost like, uh, that's their speciality. It's not about, uh, you know, making um, a special tourbillon or a minute repeater or something, but really their claim to fame is uh, timeless design, you know? Uh, a tank is a watch that has now been around for over a hundred years and more or less the design and style is kind of the same, you know. A tank from a hundred years ago and now they still more or less look the same. So um, on my left wrist here uh, I have a um, AP Ceramic Perpetual Calendar. Uh, this was released I think uh, 2017. I got it in 2017. Uh, really, really hot watch, uh, very difficult to find, highly coveted, and it's so good. <laughs> it's, it's worth like all the hype. This is a really fantastic watch, and I really enjoy wearing it all the time. Then on uh, my other wrist, I brought something completely different. Uh, it is a, uh, an Oyster Paul Newman Panda Dial. Um, it's kind of funny because um, I uh, loaned uh, like the exact same watch to uh, the production of that movie, Crazy Rich Asians. And it was very funny because the director and the writer of that movie had like a very specific, I think, uh, they, w they were very into like authenticity. Uh, and so it, it was kind of like, it's like an Easter egg for like watch nerds to watch this movie and then see this in there and it like brings a smile to their face. Uh, I, I thought it was like a really cool thing, you know. Um, a lot of times in movies, they wear like horrible knockoffs or like fake Rolexes or something. They look terrible, you know. So the fact that they would uh, take steps to do something like this, it was like really interesting, you know. The watch was only on the screen for, let's say, like half a second or something. But it was like uh, super close up like this, you know. So it was really, it was really interesting. So this is like a really interesting thing. Um, it's a fairly uncommon watch to begin with. It's a rectangular platinum manual wine paddock Philippe in very nice condition. Uh, the interesting thing about it is the script on the dial that says uh, M Kubo. And on the case back, it says M Kubo too. Um, I've done extensive research about this. Uh, my wife is Japanese. I've had her look into like internet in Japanese, talk to her friends and family, trying to figure out what this M Kubo is and we've had no idea of whatever. Um, but the other interesting thing, and there's actually a new recent development about this, by the way. Um, so the first one that came up was an old Rolex Daydate in platinum at the Phillips sale. And it was a black gilt dial with a diamond, a platinum and diamond uh, bezel. And it had a M Kubo on the dial in the same script that was engraved on the case back of my paddock. And, um, it's just interesting, it's some customization. They had said something, it might have been a famous tailor or whatever. Uh, 
I don't believe that because there is a tailor called like M Kubo, but I don't think it has anything to do with this. Um, yeah. Um, but recently, a friend of mine has discovered another uh, same reference as my Patek Philippe. The dial doesn't have anything on it, but on the back, it has an engraving that says M Kubo on it too. And it's not like a cursive, like really fancy. It's just like a small engraving, which then makes you wonder, was this a retailer at some point or was this something kind of, but again, nobody really knows. And I, I haven't been able to find out any information about it. Yeah, so the tank of Guiche, um, they made a limited edition of 150 pieces in platinum uh, with a crown on the side. There's a little ruby on it. Um, it's, you know, collectible. A lot of people like it. I've had one. Uh, they made it in rose gold, too. Recently, I found a really interesting one, which I believe they only made in three examples. And it's platinum. And then the crown is at the top at 12 o'clock. This is a more faithful design because the original one from 1920 or whatever, uh, the crown was on the top too. And, um, you know, it's just a really, again, iconic Cartier design, uh, instantly recognizable. And you have to think at that time to display uh, on a wristwatch uh, time in this uh, digital kind of uh, jump hour thing was like a really revolutionary thing, you know? And it's a really beautiful design. You know, uh, I can't say enough about uh, AP as a brand being uh, very warm and embracing of collectors and also, um, you know, like uh, wanting to keep their collectors happy. And um, they have this program, uh, which is basically, uh, I have this 15202. It has two interesting things about it. Uh, it has a original A-series uh, dial in there from a 5402. And then it has a uh, gold rotor in the case back engraved with my monogram on it. And uh, that is a service that AP offers to their collectors. Uh, basically, they can propose like a design with your initials on it in several different fonts and then you pick one and then they basically make it and then they put it on your watch. You know, uh, it's something that to me is very special because this is a watch that I'll never sell. So I was really happy that they were able to do something like that. The special thing about mine is the dial and uh, the dial is interesting because um, I had found uh, myself uh, like a new old stock uh, dial from an early uh, AP Jumbo Royal Oak, which the model number is 5402. And, uh, you know, interesting to note that this uh, uh, 15202 has a movement that is basically identical to the original one. So the dial is the same, you know, the same feet location, the size, dimensions, everything's the same. And um, when I went and did this rotor work, I told them, like, hey, I found this new old stock dial. And uh, they said, hey, uh, why don't you send the dial in with that? And then we'd be happy to, like, fit it on the watch because uh, to satisfy my own like OCD-ness about certain things, I get very uh, picky about certain fonts or little details on dials. And I always love the vintage uh, 5402, but I didn't like how the uh, date wheel is white colored because it clashed with the color of the dial. And, and the new one, the date wheel is black with white printing on it, so it's a, lo a lot more subtle. But at the same time, I liked more the original fonts and typography on the dial. So that's why like, I thought of doing this. And then I was really surprised that uh, they let me do it. And then this is something like very special that I'm happy to own in my collection. I mean, I think collecting at the end of the day is an evolutionary thing. It never stops, it never ends. And uh, you know, uh, it's constantly evol evolving. Like anybody's collection is always like changing over time. Uh, there's, you know, there could be some things that you would consider like cornerstone pieces in a collection that I would never sell. Uh, for myself, most of those are sentimental pieces. But, you know, uh, over time, uh, you know, tastes change or, you know, uh, we all don't have limitless budgets to just keep buying and not selling or trading. So by virtue of that, uh, the collection is always evolving, you know.